Let's make an aluminium melting furnace for free. In this video I want to go through step by step how to make an aluminium melting furnace completely free. It is made up of four components. The outer wall of the furnace, a crucible, wood for the fuel and an air supply. I will also show you the best way to use the furnace. First you will need to get hold of a steel container. Check this with a magnet. If it is magnetic, it is steel. It needs to be steel as the melting point for steel is around 1500 degrees C. The melting point for aluminium is around 650 degrees C. So the wood will melt the aluminium, but not the steel container. I've used a 2.5 litre paint tin. This is about the minimum size you want. The diameter of this is 150 millimetres and it is 160 millimetres tall. Bigger than this is fine, it will just take more wood to fuel it. This steel container needs a series of holes to increase the airflow, increasing the temperature. These want to be in the base and along the side. The ones in the base need to be quite large to let the air in and the ash fall out. As an example, this one has five 40mm holes and 40 10mm holes in between. The holes in the side are 22mm in diameter and I have two rows of these near the base and 10mm holes running up from these and also in between. The 10mm holes can be of any size and number as long as there is a bit of extra airflow. A crucible is just a fancy name for the container to hold the molten metal. Again. This can be anything of a suitable size, as long as it is made of steel. A tin can is an ideal crucible. Using a paint can as a furnace and a tin can as a crucible, it gives you a 35mm gap for the fuel. This is about the minimum gap you want. If you can get hold of wood for free, then this is ideal. If you have some spare charcoal, this is also fine. With the wood, you want to split it into pieces. One inch thick and one to two inches long will be perfect to ensure the wood burns well, but not too quick. You will also need to add more wood as you melt. An air supply is needed as it is very difficult to melt with wood alone. While I have managed with wood alone on occasion, I have not managed it consistently. This air supply can be anything that will force air into the furnace, increasing the oxygen and thus the temperature. A hair dryer is probably the easiest to get hold of, but a hot air gun will work as well. You will want to lift the furnace off the floor to ensure that ash can fall out and air can enter from underneath. Two bricks are ideal for this. You will want to position the furnace off the ground on two bricks. To light it, you can either build a conventional fire in the furnace by using paper in the bottom then some finer kindling on top and then your larger pieces of wood. Or you can just fill it up with wood and use a lighting fluid. Let the fire get going, add your crucible and top up with wood. At this point you want to make yourself scarce while any coatings on the furnace or crucible burn off. You can now turn on your air supply, add the aluminium and get melting. The smaller the pieces of aluminium are, the quicker they will melt. But I have just added big bits of angle before. 
and these have melted just fine. During melting, you will need something to lift the crucible. As it is made of steel, pliers will be just fine for this, but the heat may melt any plastic that gets too close to the fire. Also, protective equipment like gloves and goggles are a must. Make sure you use a new tin can each time you melt, as it won't take long for it to burn through, and you don't want molten metal everywhere. You are now ready to cast aluminium from your free melting furnace. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing because it helps the channel to grow and me bring bigger projects to you.